Hello, my name is Daryl Bear. Welcome back to Maya Mondays. So recently on my YouTube channel, someone asked, how do you go about animating or setting up a rig of a bucket dropping down into a well so that when I spin the handle, the bucket goes up and down? And there's a ton of ways of doing this, obviously. I decided to do it using Dynamics, so I'm gonna walk you through the process of setting that rig up now. So the first thing we need to do is get a dynamic curve that's kind of wrapped around this shaft that's spiraled around it that can kind of go up and down. So we're gonna use the bonus tools to help us do that. We'll go create create a spiral curve. So we're going to create one that's just got five, five rounds that obviously comes in at our origin. So we'll sort of move that guy up a little bit here and we'll just kind of scale this guy up so that it's a little bit bigger and easier to see. And then we're just going to rotate that around. And I'm holding down my J key when I do this rotation to snap to 15 degree increments. That lets me get it quickly to the right um, orientation that we want. And I just want to position it around this sort of uh, the shaft here. And this is just a demo, right? So it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's good enough. And I might go ahead and just scale this up a little bit more and then maybe spread out those, those coils ever so slightly. So it looks, it looks kind of cool. So the next thing I want to do is I want to have a straight line dropping down and going below the surface here. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and grab this control vertice on the end of the spiral curve. And when I grab this control vertice, when I move it, I'm going to hold down my L key. So you can see when I click down the L key and keep it held down, lock length is on. When I let go of the L key, lock length is off. So I'm going to use that lock length because that's just a really easy way for me to move a bunch of those vertices all at the same time to sort of start to get that curve dropping down. And with that done, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to crank this guy down just sort of below the surface of that well. So that looks pretty good. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to rebuild this curve because if you look at the CVs here, if I jump between this CV and this CV, there's a big, huge space there with no, with no CVs in that. So if we made a dynamic curve from there, it really wouldn't work very well. We want our dynamic curves always to have evenly spaced spans. So to, uh, to get to that, all we have to do is use the rebuild curve command. So if we jump over to our modeling tools, go to curves and say rebuild curve, I'm going to set this to be 150 spans. I could even go, I don't know, 200, doesn't really matter. Something like that. So we'll rebuild that curve. So now if we look at the components for that guy, you can see that they're, the spans are all nicely spaced out. They're all the same size, which is exactly what we need for this example. So let's go ahead and create a dynamic curve from this. So we'll jump over to the FX menu. With the FX menu selected, we're going to go and say, make selected curves dynamic. So as soon as we do that, if we look in our outliner here, you can see that we now have a follicle curve and the output curve. So if I highlight the output curve and hit playback, and I'll make this have a large range, something like 3,000, what happens is that curve begins to drop based on gravity, but you can see a couple of those points are fixed in space. And that's because by default, that's how the hair system is set up. So to change that, we're going to go and select that follicle and go to the attribute editor for that, and we're gonna say point lock, instead of being locked at both ends, we're gonna say have no attachment at all. So now if we play it back, that curve begins to drop, but you'll notice that it's moving kind of slow, right? Like by frame 140, it hasn't even dropped. So gravity isn't affecting this correctly for its size. And this is a pretty common thing inside of Maya. The dynamic systems in Maya are set up so that one unit equals one meter. I'm working in centimeters, so, Basically, I need to compensate for that either by scaling my object down or by changing some attributes on the size of the solver at the, at, at, at the, on the nucleus node. And this is really simple to do. So I'm just going to take my space scale and make it 100 times smaller by putting its value to 0.01. So as soon as we do that, now you can see gravity affects that appropriately for the size of this well. It moves as fast as you would expect if you dropped a ball or a bucket. It wouldn't take three seconds for that ball to, to move from the top of the well down to the bottom of the well. It would take just a, you know, a fraction of a second, which is what it's doing now. So that's something that we've talked about several times in other, other posts, um, but just be aware of that. It's pretty standard stuff inside of Maya to, to have to compensate for your size versus the size that the dynamic system's natively working in. So with that said, let's keep moving forward. So the next thing we want to do is create a relationship and I'm going to hide that follicle. We don't need to see that guy anymore. We only want to see the dynamic curve from here on out. So next we want to make a relationship between this object and that dynamic curve. So to do that, we need to make this um, object be part of the dynamic system. And we're going to go to the end cloth menu and create a passive collider out of it to, to achieve that. So by creating that passive collider now, if we play this back, you can see the curve hangs up for a while, but eventually it, it kind of slips off and down it goes and it falls. So what we want to do is we want to make a a constraint that's going to pin these guys together. So we're going to grab this dynamic curve. We're going to grab some control vertices on that guy. We'll add to our selection by holding down my shift key and we'll jump up to the constraints menu and we're going to do a very simple point to surface constraint. Those points now are tied 
to that surface. Pretty straightforward, pretty cool. The problem is when we play this back, my, my dynamic rope is like, it just keeps going and going and going. It's super duper stretchy, which isn't what we want to have happen. We want to have this be stiff. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the hair system and start changing some of the attributes on the hair system to create um, some stiffness there. So we'll bring up the attribute editor for this. And what we're going to do is we're going to say stretch resistance. We'll crank that up to something like 200. Now, as soon as I start to have objects that are moving fast with high stretch resistance, there's a good chance that with the default attributes on the Nucleus node, my solver might become a little unstable. It might start to buzz or pop or jitter or something like that. So what we want to do is we want to overdrive the number of samples ever so slightly. So instead of having this have the default values of four sub-steps, I'm going to give it something like 10, and we'll give it six on the collisions here. And you're always kind of balancing the amount of samples that you have, which is kind of a quality, you know, the higher they get, the, the potentially the higher quality you're going to get versus speed. So you kind of want to find that threshold where the solver looks stable. It's not jittery or poppy, um, but you're not just throwing away extra samples for no reason. But for this example, I think 10 and 6 should probably work. I, I, I actually don't know what I need to make it totally work. But, you know, now we've got this hair that looks pretty good. But notice that when it, it, it's really thin, right? Like, I want to I increase the thickness of that guy. So this is really simple to do. If we go back into that hair system, we're going to turn on our collision attributes, and I'm going to say display collision thickness. Now, notice collision thickness is turned on, and I start to move my collision thickness slider, but nothing's showing up. This is just a bug. I don't know what builds it's in. It's definitely in the build I have. That collision thickness doesn't update until I hit the play button. As soon as I hit the play button, though, it goes ahead and updates, and it, you know it looks it looks pretty cool. So I might make that rope even, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit thicker. So we'll do something like 1.5, you know. And again, I have to give it a kick with that play button for it to actually register. Now with that done, we can turn off the display of that guy. So that looks pretty good. So the next thing we want to do is we want to hang this bucket on the end of that guy. So to do that, I'm going to grab the bucket. I'll hit my up arrow key to jump up in the hierarchy. We'll kind of move over here, and we'll start to position this bucket over on this curve. If I actually hold down my C key, I can curve snap that guy down there. Now this bucket, I need to create a dynamic object and tie it onto the base of that curve. And I don't want to deal with all this vertices, you know, all the way to that. I'm not going to make the actual bucket a dynamic object. I'm going to make a dummy placeholder dynamic and then have that dummy placeholder pull the bucket along for the ride with a wrap deformer. So to create the dummy placeholder, I'm just going to use the modify, convert, geometry to bounding box, or bring up the option for this. Notice I have keep originals turned on, so we do something like that. That looks pretty cool. So now we've got our dummy object that's going to be our dynamic object. We're going to create an active cloth object from that guy. So now if we hit play, what's going to happen is our curve's going to drop and our cloth object's going to drop. Now I want this cloth object to actually just become like a rigid object. So if you go to the cloth attributes, there's, there's a bunch of dynamic properties that you can play around with, but basically rigidity and deform resistance. Crank those guys up, use polygon shell, you turn that guy on, or you could just use one of the presets like um, concrete would get you pretty close. I think I actually based one of these off of concrete that I dialed in myself called DTO solid. But for all practical purposes, you know, it's, it's basically making it a non-deformable object. It's an in-cloth object that you've made really, really hard. We'll turn off collide and self-collide for that. We don't really need that. So now that that's been made into this sort of pseudo-solid, what we want to do is we want to add into this guy um, a constraint, tying it, oops, tying it into this dynamic curve. So again, we'll use that, uh, you know what? We'll use point to surface. It'll work fine for this example. So now we have our little point to surface constraint, tying that guy in there, and off it goes, and it kind of bounces, and it's got a lot of energy. And, you know, I might not want that much bounce in there. So now we can start playing around with some of the other things, like um, some of the dynamic properties on this guy. So if we go in here to this cloth object, oops, I'm sorry, if we go to the hair system, and in the hair system, I'm just going to give it a little bit of motion drag and a little bit of dampening. So if we go down to the dynamic uh, properties and we give it a little bit of drag. Oops, I'm on a cloth object, not the hair system. Let's get the hair system selected. There we are. So in this guy, we're going to go down here to the forces section, and we're going to give it some dampening and a little bit of motion drag. So by doing that, you'll just see that it's going to pull a lot of the energy out of that guy. So that, that looks pretty good. I like the way that looks. Nice. So with that done, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go back here, and we're going to create that wrap deformer. So we'll select this piece of geometry, hit the up arrow key to grab the hierarchy, add into my selection our object that's going to carry it along for the ride, jump over to our rigging menu, 
and go deform and just create a wrap deformer for that guy. So now we can hide that dude and sort of line this guy up here. Go back to our channel box. We'll grab this guy. We'll grab that Z rotate and we'll do an interactive playback. So the interactive playback will start, start our sim here. And with that going, you know, I can use my handle to start to crank this guy up. And as I crank it up, obviously my bucket's going to rise up. So we're just winding that rope up. Or I could do something like wind it down and then the bucket's going to drop back down. So the last thing that I would want to do to finish this guy off, we can just zero this guy back out here and rewind our, our head, our playhead, is I'd want to give this rope um, some thickness. So that's real simple. We'll just go over to our surfaces. I just created at my origin here. If you look, you'll see that there's like this little circle right there, right? So we'll just add onto our selection that curve and we'll jump over to modeling and we'll say surface extrude and with the extrusion we'll set our pivot to a value of one our fixed path to a value of one and we'll set our pivot to component pivot and just to make it look extra cool i'll add on my rope material and you know oh and if you wanted to you could also go into the um the hair system and this is actually really pretty cool um, turn on self collide for the hair system Oops, and not the cloth. We want the hair. Sorry about that. Self collide. So we'll turn that self collide on and, you know, kind of frame this guy up. Actually, we'll stay close because it looks cool when it does the self collide. So you can see it drops down. It does a self collide. Um, we can go back into that interactive playback, you know, by jumping over to my FX menu and clicking the interactive playback button. So with that done, I can start to, you know, wind this guy up and. Obviously, with that self-collide turned on, it just will, will kink itself up and look really, really cool as I start to, you know, start to do this. It just sort of, if it happens to collide with itself, it just pushes it out. So that's really pretty much it. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys and you were able to follow along. Thanks for taking the time to watch Maya Mondays, and please click the subscribe button. Cheers, everybody.